Okay, so let's go through some of the remaining functionality. Uh, basically, we have uh, uh, delete, edit, and add to implement. Delete is exactly the same as vote. It behaves in the same way. Hmm? Um, of course, the effect will be different, but uh, uh, what we can do, we already have in the API, we just implemented last time, the delete uh, API. We're already there. So we just have to map that in the answer list. We did already something last week, if you remember. We implemented some delete answer. And now we know that, okay, delete answer is the asynchronous call. It calls the delete post, and then we need to uh, update uh, the list, for example. So we are doing the same thing here for delete. We make uh, handle delete, sorry, an asynchronous function. Where is that? Handle delete, make it asynchronous. Then we set the state uh, to waiting to, to be true. We execute the delete actions. We await it for it to complete. And then uh, we reload the state, for example. And this is the same function as before. Um, of course, if we want, we can do also the optimistic delete. So we'll, here, before awaiting the delete answer, we can just remove the list from the table and see it disappear. So just for delete here, when you refresh, it's, it goes away. Okay. If we want to delete it beforehand, so we can do we can apply the same method. So you remember the method that we had at the beginning where we were deleting for the list. We just have a map, uh, not a map, so a filter. Keep everything except uh, the answer with that ID. Locally, so that was easy uh, because it's the same. We are locally modifying a table that is currently being shown. Okay, add is a bit, is a bit different. So the add uh, um, calls a, a different route, add answer with the ID of the question to which we are trying to add the answer with a form. Okay, so the form has its own life. It's still the same component as we had before. The cancer is just mapped to the navigation, to the navigate, to the answer, so it's working already. What we all need to do is just to implement the uh, action of the add button. Add in the button, add the add button is an operation that, that the, the form itself can do by calling the API. So actually what cancel does is to navigate back to the answers. What the add can do is to send a post for adding the answer, and then navigate back to the list of answers, where the new answer would appear. Right? So uh, we don't need, for doing an add, we don't need to have the list of answers. Hmm? We, we, because it's, it's, it's new data, it's fresh data. So we can just post it and go back to the list. So the implementation of the add button can be directly inside the add answer form. No, so the add answer, yes, is handling the cancel by navigation. And uh, handle head was initially doing some uh, add answer to the parent component. We, not, we must remove this because we, that it doesn't exist any longer. And what we can do is to make something like, of course, uh, this will be asynchronous, something like await. Uh, for something like a function like add the user, add the answer, sorry, from an API somewhere. They should be implemented in the API. And then navigate. I input in this await here so that I don't navigate back to the list until I'm sure that the um, new answer has been added to the database. Otherwise, the risk is that I'm going back to the list and they're refreshing the list before the, the old one has been loaded. So we just need to implement this, that will, uh, so let's implement the, uh, the, cli the client part of the API, knowing that the server part of the API is like this. 
add a new answer to a question. This is what we need to call. So we need to have uh, an object with text, author, and date. That is something that uh, we already have here. The form is already providing with, with, with this information. And uh, the, ATP, the, the question, we should also have the question ID here. So an extra parameter that they can extract from the route, from the route parameters. Okay, so I, I already have it because in, uh, in this component is called ID question. Sorry, I in the wrong, at answer, I have this ID question as a parameter. So uh, this add answer would just take these parameters plus the ID of the question. Add answer with maybe a small a at the beginning, and I need to implement this in the API. So again, it would be something here like async function, this, and exporting that. So in this case, we have to make a post. So we can reuse, in a way, the code for the post uh, that we have here for voting. Yep, this code. We only have to modify, of course, the parameters and the body content. So, but, but all the structure is the same. Uh, and there's a... Uh, I or do we already have one in line 555? Ah, no, no, because, okay, it would just tell me that the body is identical, but of course, I'm trying to modify it. So the URL is just as ID with questions, not answers. Right? Is it? Questions, question ID, ans uh, answers. Questions, question ID, answers. Questions. ID question, oh sorry, ah, yes, ID, ID question, slash answers. So this is the URL, post, JSON, and now I need to provide an object that looks like a new answer. That contains, uh, let's pick the example here. Too many braces. So the text, the author, and the date now can be taken from the parameters. Text, author, date. Uh, just be careful because date, we have this problem that we never know whether date is a string or a. a or a, or a um, DJS object. Hmm? So uh, let's see how it's handled here and, uh, in the form. Where is that? The answer form data is uh, a string. Because it's okay. It's just a string, which, which is okay for setting that into the API. Okay, I was wondering here if I should write data because data is already a string or data dot uh, to ISO string uh, if it were an uh, DJS object. Uh, but from the code, in the, from the form, it just uh, it comes out as a string. So it's already what I need here. So this is the add answer that I need. And uh, is it done already? So I can enter some text here, some author, click on add, and it doesn't work, because product add answer is not a function, so I forgot to pass the, I forgot to save the file, first of all.
answer is not defined. So let's check the names. So we have a is end or add that calls uh, add answer is okay. Didn't uh, import it from the API. So let's try again. Uh, is is question. I declare a uh, typo here in uh, uh, add answer 16. ID question. Okay, something is happening. So it was there was some typo here and there. But then I go to add. I change the date uh, to you know, 6 of May. Of May. A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, add. We are waiting for the post. We are waiting for refreshing this, and then the new answer is here. So add, delete are working properly. Uh, of course, uh, I should be Careful here, because when I click on add, I can click it two or three times more, and it will, while, while it's waiting, so if I want it, I should also disable the add button while, uh, while the add operation is in progress. We can apply the same methods also here. The important thing is that uh, we are doing the navigate, uh, so going away from the form only when we are sure that the operation was correct. So in this case, we didn't have any check. But uh, imagine that an answer could fail for some reason. Maybe you didn't provide uh, the auto or the text, or the text is too long or too, or too short or something like that. So what you want to do is to be able to provide an error message and give the user a chance to correct its error while it's still in the form. So don't destroy the form until you are sure that the data has been saved. Is there something wrong? I, I didn't add a try catch block here, but of course you should do that. You should check the result. And if there's something wrong, we are still in the form. Until we navigate, we are still there and we can still recover any kind of error. Some errors can be due to local validation, and that's okay. Or some error can, do, uh, can come from the server. So you're sending the post, and while the post is working, you, you, you you sit tight, you stay there, stay there, don't go away. You cannot be too, opti too optimistic here because if there are some errors coming, you don't want to lose all the data that the user entered. Give them the chance to correct and click on add a second time. Okay? But this is just application of the same method. Sometimes uh, you can't afford to be optimistic because you would lose uh, some, some user's work. And uh, so this await here is the most important uh, word in this file. Hmm? Okay, and um, about edit. Edit is a bit more, was, has always been a bit more complex. Let's just remember what we are doing in the case of edit. Edit uh, uh, calls a, a, it works on a separate route that takes an idea of a question and an idea of an answer. And uh, <coughs> um, edit answer gets a parameter for the moment uh, with some questions, or with the list of questions. The edit answer component is a new component that enters, okay, enters the concept, the, the cancel very well. And it can do, well, the point that we need to check are two to correct. One is the, the edit action itself. But it would be more or less the same as, as the add. Make an API that calls the server, and that's it. So here, you should write call API, and then navigate. That's the easy part, in a way. 
we have the data from the form, we just call the API. The more complex part is the initial value of the form. Uh, the initial value of the form, here we add them object, we computed an object called edit the answer by filtering on this props of answers list. It doesn't exist anymore. So we cannot use this strategy. We don't have a list of answers, not in the props. We are here and we click on edit. But, so here in this page, we would have all the information about this specific answer that they want to edit, okay? But the edit answer component is not a child of this component. So this component cannot pass the data there. It's being called by the router. Uh, edit answer is a child of app. App doesn't have the, the list of answers in, the, in its state. Okay, so we have a choice to make here. Either we want, we make this element, edit answers, as a child of the answers list, then we could pass the answer that need to be edited, the information about the answer. So we need to modify the routing. We should have a nested routing, some routes defined at the top level and some routes defined inside the um, answers list. That could be an option. And then I have my child and I can pass the information that they want to my child. I create the form for editing as a child. So basically we would have app that renders uh, um, answers list that itself renders the form as a second level child, just to have access to this, to the information about the, the, the answer. The other possibility is try to give this information to this component uh, through the navigate functionality. Let's go back to the edit button. The edit button is uh, uh, in the answers list somewhere. When we click the edit button, okay, we have some, okay, edit button here. I'm calling some uh, handle edit function. Handle edit from the answer row comes from above, comes from uh, uh, answer details, which comes from, again, our answer list. Here, yeah. answer list uh, renders answer details uh, by providing the handle edit function. So when I click on the edit button, what the handle edit is doing is just uh, navigating away. Okay. There's an extra functionality of the router that we didn't discuss when we talked about the router, uh, of the navigate uh, uh, method that can have a second parameter. A second parameter is an object that is stored in the location history, in the history location, in the location object. The browser, this is a um, mechanism native to the browser. It has nothing to do with, with React. The location object, window.location, contains a sub-property which is called state. So when you click on a link, and basically you are changing the location of the browser, you can set the state of this location so that the future page can receive some information from the previous page. So this could be a nice thing to do here. I'm here, I know all the, about that, this specific answer, and I want to give you this information by navigating to another page that can recover that information. So uh, in the navigate uh, method, I can have a second object, uh, which is uh, an option object uh, with, uh, in particular, one state problem. We may have different properties, like uh, save this uh, navigation in the, in the history, don't save it, or something like that. But these are details. What we are interested in is the state property. 
So when we navigate it, we can send an object with a state property. This state property may be any JavaScript object, which is serialized as a string and is available to the target page. The target page can extract this information. So this is useful if you want to transfer information from one page to another through an, an internal navigation in the router. It's not a state in the React sense, OK? It's just some local information that is only valid in that specific link. If you refresh the page, uh, that information is lost. Okay? If you go to, to navigate to that page with another link or with another method, it doesn't work. The state will be empty, only if you pass it through this property. And so we can put here the information about the answers to be the answer to be uh, updated. So we can put, for example, the answer object here. Uh, the current answers to be edited. So we have the ID only here. Uh, we can uh, filter the list of. Uh, answers with the with this id okay we can return we only we don't need to send the all the answers only that specific answer that we need to edit so we can add the answers filter where the a a dot id equal to id and take the first and only element Okay, so I have all the answers here. I have the ID of the answer I want to delete. Let's extract that specific object from here. Okay, let's make. Because I want to modify it later on. Okay. So I have the information on the page where, I, where I'm clicking the edit button. Now I go to the other side on the page that is receiving this navigation, which is the edit answer, and I want to extract this information. This information is uh, in an object which is, which is the location object. Oh, I'm storing the state object into the location information. So we use uh, an extra hook that gives me the location. OK. Uh, the React router has this uh, use location hook. Right now, we have this location object that may or may not contain the state. Of course, it depends. Uh, we need to check uh, because it depends whether we navigate it by giving a state object or not. But if we have the state, we can use it uh, to set the initial value. So we can say that if, uh, uh, for example, location.state exists, then uh, we can define uh, the initial value, so we have um, yeah. let initial value equal to location to state. So it's a problem here because the value. Like this. So I define a variable outside, I can update it. And uh, uh, I can edit answer. No, sorry, I edited answer. 
so that they use the same value. And I remove this. Okay. So let's see what is happening. At least if we, if we can get the value back. Right, so let's go back to the form and click on edit. Edit will navigate to the, to edit the answer by giving this state object. We load this page to be sure. Click on edit. Okay, of course something is wrong, but uh, product of the initial value is undefined in the answer form. Yes or not? Uh, undefined, undefined, yeah, okay. So let me check uh, this location. Uh, object app name search hash state null. Uh, so they, they did something wrong in passing the state. Uh, so that's why it's wrong here. Okay, state uh, contains now, okay, the, the error basically that it didn't save the file. So I, I wasn't passing the state because I forgot to save this file. So actually this it was correct and we see now in the console that I'm receiving a state object that contains uh, information about the answer. Okay, now later on there are some errors Initial value dot date dot format is not a function. It's again DayJS, which is biting us. Uh, it's, it's come from the answer form itself. Line eight, answer form. We didn't modify the answer form because it's uh, it expects the initial uh, the date of initial value to be a DayJS object. And right now it's just a simple object with a string value. Um, one limitation of this mechanism of, of passing an object is that uh, the object is, uh, by the browser, is serialized as a string. So any more complex object will be downgraded to a simple string. So it's no longer a DJS object. And actually what I see here in the console that this object contains a state And the date, uh, you see, is object, is not DJS. So it contains all the fields of the, of the DJS object because it can be, it's being serialized, but it doesn't contain any, met any method. So it would be better probably in this case to just send, uh, create an object with just a string and reconstruct a DJS object on, on the receiving end, okay? Probably. The idea is that, uh, unfortunately, every time I'm passing some information to or from the server in an API, or from page to page through the location, uh, everything should be serialized as a string or a, or a JSON object, and the uh, object methods are lost. The object identity is lost. It's a pity, but there is not a normal function call where I can pass any kind of object. It's something that tries to uh, coerce some object into just a text uh, representation. So we should be aware that on the other hand, we don't have the object, we, are, we only have the, the, the text. Uh, so it requires some work from us. So when we send the state, 
Where is that? Here. I shouldn't send a real object, but uh, just uh, an object with the date. Uh, so let's modify it. I take the answer and I just modify it uh, by replacing the DJS object with its uh, string representation. So for my answer is an object with the same parameters, with the same uh, properties, except the date will be replaced by uh, my answer dot date dot to iso string. And this should be half of the word. So in the state, I'm putting an object without the JS object, but just strings. So if I reload this, not this one, sorry, this one, and click on edit, I will see, of course, there are errors down the way, but the object I receive as a state that contains a date as a string here. And now I need, on the other hand, to reconstruct an answer object with the proper values from, from the location state. So edit, if we have a location state, then the edited answer should be a new object with these parameters. Maybe we can use a new uh, Edited answer, new answer. We can use the constructor with the ID, the text, author, score, and date. So in this case, we should have, again, an answer object, and the form should be able to work on that. Yeah, it does. So we are here. We click on Edit. We are calling the, uh, what's the name, Edit Answer component that just extracts from the location state the information about uh, the answer that I clicked on. And he just uses the other the answer form as before. It's the same for I didn't modify the form in any way here. Okay? And it's initialized uh, with these values. You can go back, go forward, and so on. Now, of course, you need to implement the save functionality, but it will be exactly the same as, uh, as the add. It will only call a, po a put instead of a post uh, with the same object with the same URL. So it will be easy. Hmm? So we just saw this extra mechanism that we can use in our navigation of sending a state object with all the care that only simple objects can be exchanged and not complex, or complex objects or objects created by constructors. Okay, I will uh, implement this uh, extra functionality, the put, uh, and give you the code, in the, maybe by tomorrow or something like that, we complete the exercise. Uh, I'm not doing it right now because I want to spend some time uh, talking about uh, the exam, okay? The procedure for the exam and so on. So let me break the video.